A recent strange event left a group of hikers baffled as they spotted a transparent four-foot-tall figure walking by the Pilcomayo River in Taria, Bolivia, an area notorious for being plagued by interdimensional portals, according to locals. The creature, photographed and later shared online, was described as a grey being with unusually long limbs and a strange way of walking. Oddly, the entity Hmm. didn't seem to have a reflection in the water beside which it was walking. Buying glasses must be a photograph which quickly predator the alien from Taria is currently under scrutiny by UFO experts, including well known ufologist Carlos Cordero. Cordero noted the creature's resemblance to a grey being, categorized kind of, huh? by its long oh, limbs, yeah. and emphasized bro. the need to verify <laughs> the image's authenticity. Dude. The online community is also divided on whether the photograph is real or a product of digital manipulation. To settle the debate, Cordero suggested employing artificial intelligence to definitively determine the photograph's genuineness. The sighting has reignited interest in the region's alleged ties to extraterrestrial activities. Cordero mentioned that Taria appears to have a unique connection to such activities, reinforcing the idea that there might be more at play in the region. The abundance of minerals and the purported presence of interdimensional portals in the area could be interconnected. This is not the first time Taria has been linked to extraterrestrial phenomena. In May 1978, a large number of people near the Bolivian-Argentine border reported witnessing a spaceship crash in Macoya, an event that some consider to be South America's most credible UFO crash incident. The US military also showed interest in the cylindrical object. Did they say Macoya? Well, the like military that. personnel present at the scene, including Corporal Natalio Fafan Ruiz, were reportedly terrified, with some fearing the end of the world was imminent. Additionally, people located over 100 miles away claim to have heard an explosion resembling a sonic boom. The recent alien sighting near the Pilcomayo River has sparked a wave of discussions and theories about extraterrestrial life and interdimensional portals in the region. While the photograph's authenticity is yet to be verified, the incident has certainly piqued the interest of both UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike. What's strange, too, if you look at it, it, it almost seems like it's see-through. Yep. Back like to the whole invisibility like the, thing, Gabe. Yeah, look, you can kind of, like, see through the background of it. Yep. That's strange. It's, it's back to the whole invisibility thing. you gotta, you got to wonder if alien tech is so good that it can literally pull itself through time, space, gravity, that they've figured out... Uh, actual cloaking and invisibility and all that stuff. And there's probably an energy source. Maybe that alien's out taking a stroll and his battery, the battery pack that keeps his invisibility up, it just started to wear out. You know what I mean? But you got, so that, that makes sense that it would be sort of see-through because maybe it's, it's kind of blunking in and out. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, and and then like other questions come into play, right? Are these aliens? Are they interdimensional beings from a different reality, right? And and why yep. why would they just be walking in the daylight? You know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't they be like stealthy, right? Like just like hiding somewhere instead of because they they you know, must have known that, you know, human beings were around. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I'm sure why, they did. Why would they just be walking around like, rutu, 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 right? Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, guy, why would they? Because this alien's particularly nostalgic. It likes to feel the sand <laughs> in its claws. Hey, he, he was maybe, in that uh, Sunny Chiba. <laughs> maybe he was stalking the hikers the whole time. And yeah. He's going to attack him or something. I don't know. Hey, he was like, but, uh, I was going to say, I don't necessarily think it's an alien because you guys know me. I'm big into the missing 411 stuff. And I've heard that, you know, they've a few of these cases where people have seen what appeared to be a cloaked being in the woods and stuff like that, you know, mm-hmm. that was like stalking them. And then there's even a video. I don't know if you can still find it. I remember I came across it a few years ago where a hiker actually caught a clip of it, you know. Like she actually videotaped it. 
briefly, you know? And of course I've come across, you know, those types who are like, Oh, you know, I've been black ops and all that crap saying that, you know, predator, the movie predator is based off of real beings that the military has gone to go fight, you know? So whatever, Mm. I don't know. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, close encounters of the third kind was supposedly, Mm. um, mimicked off after like a real event that happened here in New Mexico. I didn't realize that. Yeah, at uh, Holloman Air Force Base. Oh, yeah? Yeah, supposedly uh, these aliens came down there and the President of the United States, I want to say it was Eisenhower, went. It's one of the presidents, and I don't remember exactly which one. I want to say it was Eisenhower. But they stroke, uh, they had a deal with them that they Uh could take so many humans to do experiments on if they exchanged it for um, Technology. technology. Supposedly. And that's where uh, Close Encounters came from. But, oh, there's you know. there's a lot of stuff circulating around Eisenhower. Like, supposedly Eisenhower was, like, he took, when Area 51, you know, was still relatively fresh, you know? Because mm-hmm. um, he was a president, what, in, what, 50-something? I don't remember the years, yeah, but, the you know. Well, exactly. Eisenhower but, was the last president before the end of World War II, I believe. No, because he was still a general was in he? World War II. Yeah. Was he? But he well, became thinking? president oh, I'm thinking of shortly Roosevelt. after. Yeah. Right, I'm thinking of Roosevelt. Right. Well, it was like Roosevelt, then I believe it was Truman, and then I think Eisenhower after him, I believe. Yeah, I think that was a succession right there. Yeah. So he was a president in the 50s, you know. But, yeah, I remember he had a story about supposedly going to Area 51 and taking, like, some army division with them because he realized that was, like, a different sect of the government running that whole thing. He's like, I'm the president of the U.S. How come I don't know anything about this? And basically when he got there the first time, they're like, get the fuck out, you know. Or we'll, you know, we'll destroy, you know, basically we'll kill you. We don't care. So well, he, he went has back. That, yeah. <laughs> he, he has that famous speech, remember? He says, oh, yeah. Be aware of the yeah. military industrial complex. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's the whole thing about that. It's like he didn't just say that for nothing. You know, I mean, you're talking a big, a big war hero is General of World War II, you know, like a very predominant general during World War II, you know. Of all people, who, he would know. Exactly, you know. I so. think him and um, his speech was was eye eye opening, and then uh, uh, of course um, Kennedy's speech. Remember? Yeah, um, that was another very interesting speech. Sure. Um, yeah. But uh, back to the UFO stuff. I don't know. Like again, this is just hearsay of you know what could be. But beings like this to me are very, very interesting because, again, it's like, where do they come from and what are they doing here just strolling on the beach? Yeah, well, he, yeah. he likes to fill sand in his claws. <laughs> he's like he's like this. He's all, man, life is yeah. nuts. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I got to go follow this human around. I might as well enjoy my little <laughs> walk on the beach. Yeah, right. you probably have the technology to hover or whatever you're hoping for, Gabe. But this it, this braid just happens to be a bit nostalgic. He's a happy <laughs> alien. Yeah, whatever he is. All right, so I'm going to give this a thumbs up because I, I just think it's really cool. Yeah, I do too. Thumbs up for me. All right, so we're about to be at time. Let me resend the, the uh, thing, okay? Okay. All right. People are saying, oh, how do you know? Instagram user Paranoid Normal has uploaded another terrifying piece of footage. The clip shows a homeowner getting ready to move out of a house which they suspect has been haunted for some time. In the footage, the homeowner, who believes that the spirit in his house responds to whistling, performs a test to demonstrate the entity's presence. Oh, look at that shit. That's crazy. He's a whistler. To further confirm the phenomenon, he places the camera on a table and whistles once again. (laughs) 
He then walks into the room to show that there's no one in there. You guys, if you don't believe me, there's nobody in here. However, when he returns to the kitchen, he finds this. Oh, all the cabinets and everything's open. Look at that shit. All the cabinets are now open. Yeah, I think I'd be moving out early. So you guys guys for that's the mysterious crazy. events captured in the video have sparked a debate on whether the house is genuinely haunted. The fact that the homeowner is moving out due to the alleged paranormal activities lends credence to the incident. Whether or not this is definitive proof of a haunting remains up for debate, but it certainly adds to the growing collection of mysterious and unexplained phenomena captured on camera. <laughs> Seriously, you guys have asked for it. That's crazy. Um, That's crazy. I like that one a lot, especially at the end where everything was, you know, out and then the fucking chair started moving. That's a double thumbs up for me. Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool video. And, you know, we got context from it. Door opens, he he walks in, he comes out. But there have been a, 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 a... Easy little cut there, maybe, but it seemed pretty seamless to me. Um, I think if I think it's pretty clear that the place is fucking haunted. If everything that was seen was not fake or digital manipulation, that freaking place has some shit going on in it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah, was the thing the chair uh, moving. Yeah. The thing I find interesting too is the fact that it responded to whistling. So I don't know if y'all have mm-hmm. ever heard this before, but supposedly you're not, you know, you're not supposed to whistle at night and you're definitely not supposed to whistle at night in the woods. That's like mm-hmm. one of those things, you know, like one of those sayings. Yeah. You know, uh, but uh, I just find that, that interesting one? that, yeah, I learned that like a year ago. It was like, Holy crap! Like, <laughs> but um, that's kind of makes whistle sense. at night or what? Yeah, you're not supposed to whistle at night. Period. You and know? so weird shit happen to you or what? That's you know what from what I found. That's what they kind of said. They didn't say why. They're like, just don't do it. You know? Huh? Yeah. I never heard that either. Yeah, makes sense. Um, it makes sense. Hey, someone might take you up on that offer, huh? <laughs> Hey, um, hey, I'm big not. daddy. Hey, alien, what are you doing here? <laughs> Screw that. They're gonna, be like, they're gonna be like, I heard yeah. someone here. With, they're gonna go, I heard someone here responded to violence. <laughs> it's it's like, crazy. Be, uh, anal probing. <laughs> you know what, man? As crazy as it is, I don't do it anymore. Like, I just, I was never a big whistler anyway. So I definitely don't do it at night now. I'm like, yep, nope. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to find out, you know? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it's strange. Thumbs so up for me. This thumbs video. up this video? Yep. For me, yeah. For me, it's thumbs up. Yeah. All right, let's cool. continue. Cool video. Argentinian actress and singer Yamina Barone recently startled her Instagram followers Man, uh, by posting a snippet of her home security footage that appears to capture something rather eerie. In the video, Yamina is sitting at her table when suddenly something seems to frighten her. Hmm. She explained that it felt like something touched her shoulder, prompting her to review her home security footage. What she found was terrifying. When the footage is slowed down, it appears to show a tiny hand reaching up and touching her on the shoulder. Oh yeah, that's weird. Huh. The clip quickly went viral with viewers speculating on the nature of the strange apparition. Many were baffled by the sudden appearance of the mysterious hand, and theories ranged from a trick of the light to genuine paranormal activity. The strange occurrence has left Yimina and her followers perplexed and unnerved. Whether or not this is definitive proof of the paranormal remains up for debate, but it certainly has piqued the curiosity and imagination of many. And that little saying, it was like a little kid's hand that was behind her. Yeah, like a tiny, tiny little. Mm Mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, it was caught on camera. Yeah. Right. And it was but kind she of is like an low actress. quality. <laughs> so. Yeah. But she is an actress. <laughs> hey. Uh, 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 can I give a diagonal? Right. Yeah. Can I give a diagonal? Yeah. Uh, thumbs middle. Thumbs middle. Thumbs yeah, middle. Because, yeah, McVice, you're right about that for sure. She is an actress. And She's used to performing what, in front of a camera. Well, and what more? <laughs> hey, she was like um, this. <laughs> and viral right. footage. Hey, that was scripted. More, <laughs> right. What more would they need? You know, viral footage. Yeah. An actress trying to get her career up off the ground. Mm-hmm. They do this viral stunt. Exactly. It's not to say that it's not real what yeah. happened her. It's just we don't know, man. I'm just skeptical. Yeah. And when it's an actress, dude, come on, man. Yeah. You know? Who the hell? Who knows, you know? I agree. Thumbs middle. All right. Let's continue. Before we take a look at an allegedly oh, cursed fuck that. painting, remember to hit that Thumbs subscribe up already. button, yeah. toggle that fuck little bell icon there, and turn on the <laughs> notifications. Tell me right there, man. Be in the loop every time we yeah. talk about scary and creepy videos. A woman from She's East Sussex has experienced a series of mysterious and unfortunate events after purchasing a seemingly cursed painting from a charity shop. The painting, painting bought for twenty evil. pounds from the Hastings. I know, of right? It doesn't look right. St. Leonard's yeah, on like sea. Stare, depicted like, a young girl yeah, in red man. dress, and had been previously returned by another buyer who claimed it ruined. I wouldn't want to buy that. This prompted the charity shop manager to add a possibly cursed <laughs> warning like- on the item. The woman, Zoe Elliott Brown, bought the portrait after her mother, Jane, became transfixed by it and urged her to make the purchase. After bringing the painting home, the family's dog immediately started growling and avoided the artwork. Shortly after, Jane began experiencing health issues such as hot flushes, shakiness and feeling extremely cold despite wearing four layers of clothing. She also became unusually protective of the painting, continuously staring at it and even polishing it when it didn't need cleaning. While Jane believed her illnesses were unrelated to the painting. Jane's fucking was a meth head. That's why she's so cool. I was about to say, Jane health. has more issues than a painting. So we eventually decided to keep the painting in a box filled with sage in an attempt to cleanse it of its negative energy. Things took a turn for the worse when Zoe and her partner Ben encountered a large black figure during a walk to watch Ooh. a lightning storm. The couple fled in terror as the figure seemed to chase them. Although Zoe didn't initially connect the incident to the painting, she later suspected that it might be related. Determined to rid her family of the curse, Zoe returned the painting to the charity shop, only to discover a screw in her new car tyres upon arrival. Despite warning the shop manager to be cautious about selling the painting again, Zoe eventually felt compelled to take the artwork back to her home, fearing that someone else might mishandle it. Zoe now hopes to find someone knowledgeable about the supernatural who can properly deal with the painting <laughs> and its potential curse. Zoe's got meth problems. She sealed the painting up in <laughs> sage, hoping it will cleanse the artwork and her mother's hey, home like, of any negative. You want this energy. painting? <laughs> this painting's cursed, baby. Worth a lot of money. Hey, how much you willing to spend for that painting? Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. That one felt made up to me, man. Thumbs down. And then the way, like, the picture of the girl with the painting, it's almost like someone said, hey, so I'm scared of it. Or like, like, hey, pretend like the painting is, this painting is the most scariest thing in your life. And you're, you know, the, the, that almost looks, she almost looked directed. That's red flags all over the place, man. I agree. I don't know. I'm going to give it a thumbs up, and here's why, you know. This is a good lesson for everybody because you just, and I think this is why it's in the Bible. You're not supposed to have any graven Im- images, but when it comes to artwork, especially stuff that you're buying secondhand, you have no idea the person who created that. You have no idea what they were into when they made it. They could be witch in a witchcraft, sorcery, mm-hmm. devil worship. You don't know. You don't know what oils or whatever they use to create the painting you have no idea you know 
but there's some yeah. sick sadistic shit out there in the world you know and i think this stuff does happen you know people buy stuff like this bring it home now all of a sudden they got all these problems you know mm-hmm. so i'd say thumbs up as a warning to the viewers that this shit does happen and you want to watch out with this crap you know anyway that's my, that's McVice's warning to you all. Well, and you know, and it's that's why they say it's a good thing to sage anything you get from the thrift store when you bring it into your house, anyway. Yeah, but sometimes saging doesn't do anything. Yeah, know? if it's extremely crazy, yeah, you no know, haunted. Yeah, it's not going to do nothing. Right. Just going to piss right. it off. But I have heard of people saging secondhand things before, or bringing them into their home and then just saging the space. Sure, for, for you know, because kind of, you never know. Things can have all kinds of fucked up energy yeah. attached to it. Um, Absolutely, it's, it's also a good idea too. If you move into a place, if like there's some objects left behind, maybe get rid of them. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, you just don't know, man. You know, I very foolishly kept the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> right, I found yeah. a knife. I thought it was cool. No, like right. there's a shovel that was left. Oh, for mm-hmm. real? Yeah, I kept it. Oh, no, but no. <laughs> no, tell me what that is used for. And we, I always used to think, I used to think, well, what if, you know, you never know if a property is bought and used as like a, mm-hmm. like a body stash house or, or no, just something. you don't. Man. You never know. Cause, you know, there's a lot of people that say, <laughs> that would be no, really, There's a lot of people that say that a lot, that back in the 70s and 80s, a lot of the mob, uh, a lot of the mob victims that were never found were connected to their connection to construction companies and other ancillary companies that the mob owned. So there's homes, you know, you lay a, a foundation for a home, stash four or five bodies in there. You know, as long as it's decent, decent foundation. Hey, where's Jimmy company. Nichols? Yeah. I haven't seen him. He bought a new house. Yeah. So my my point is, (laughs) yeah, exactly. You never know what kind of weird shit might just be under your house, even even old graves, old places people are bones dead. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. All right. Well, that's been our episode. We'll catch you on the flip side. Peace. Peace. Bye. Adios.